Let me start with, uh, what is your full name? Mr. Edward Beavers. Okay. How do you spell your last name? B-E-A-V-E-R-S. Okay. Uh, by what name are you normally called? Uh, Ed. Okay. Where were you born? Uh, Barber County Code District. Okay. Uh, what is your birth date? 8-1-26. Okay. Did you marry? I've been married twice. Okay. Um, do you want to mention your spouse's name or your most recent? Or? No, the first one was Wanda Ruth, and uh, I lost her when I was 25 years old. Oh, wow. And I just lost Lucille in four and a half year ago. Okay. Um, what was your first wife's maiden name? Wilson. Okay, and what was your second wife's maiden name? Henderson. Okay. Uh, did you have children? Yes, I have a daughter with uh, my first wife, and then I had a son and lost him at the same time I lost her. Your wife? And second wife? My first wife. Oh, okay. It was a childbirth. I lost a son, and, uh, but we had a daughter. And then I had a son with the second wife. Okay. Are, uh, is the daughter and the son still in this area? My son lives right next door to me on Route 119. My daughter lives in uh, Finleyville, Pennsylvania. Okay. What's your daughter's name? Wanda Jean. Okay. And uh, does she still carry the name Beavers? No, she married uh, Norman Kelly. K-E-L-L-Y? E-Y. E-Y, okay. And, um, okay, how about your son? Is he, uh, or, okay, is your son married? Yes. Okay. Who's he married to? What's his wife's name? Cindy. She was Cindy Martin. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Do you know who the first members of your family were to come to Taylor County or Grafton? If you don't, it's okay. It's just, okay, that's fine. Um, did you grow up in Taylor County or did you grow up no, in Barber? I grew up in Barber County. Okay, so you wouldn't have gone to school here. Uh, no, I did go uh, part of one year here. Okay. I had to walk three miles to catch the bus to go to high school in Barber County, and I only had to walk a mile to catch the bus to come down here. So my junior year, I came here, and B and O offered me a job, and I took it because I knew it was going to be in service before the year was over, and I was. Okay. Um, what uh, <clears throat> branch of the military were you in? I was in the Army. Army. Uh, did you serve during war World War II? Yes. Okay. Um, when? When did you serve? Well, I'm in service uh, November the 3rd, 1944. I came out in August of 46. Okay. I don't remember what. But I spent most of that time in Europe. Okay. Where, where did you uh, receive your basic training? Camp Robinson, Arkansas. Okay, and how long did that take? Four months. It was a, a month. All you got was a cram course back then when they shipped you. Sounds pretty vigorous. Yeah, they kept pretty us intense. busy down there. Okay, and then you were shipped where? Well, I was in France and Germany. ship and we landed in Glasgow, Scotland. We rode a train down through uh, Scotland, England, across the English Channel and into France. Okay. And then we moved on up into Germany. Okay. Um, you're talking about riding a train there. When let, let me just back up just a minute and then we'll go back to Germany and uh, or France. But uh, when you left this area, did you depart from Grafton to go to the military? 
perhaps on the train. Do you remember? If you don't, that's okay. That's. We went to Huntington, and then we okay. shipped from there. Okay, Huntington, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, so you were in France. What What did you do there? What was your part? You mentioned a ship. Were you on a ship? Just crossing the channel. Okay. Of course, going from New York to uh, Scotland, I was on the luxury liner Queen Elizabeth. Okay. But once you got to France, what, what, I know you were in the Army, what, what did you do there? What was your job? What? Well, we went in as replacement. Uh, I don't know if you've read or heard of the Battle of the Bulge when all the American boys were killed. We went in there as replacements. There was two people left in the company I went in. Now, I don't know how many of them were killed, but either wounded or killed, there's only two left. Wow. So we had a pretty big loss there. Okay, so you would have been like right on the front line then, right? I was on the front lines when the war ended, yes. Okay. Well, what was it like when, when the war ended? Well, it was a happy time, but the only thing I can remember is thinking about coming home. Okay. Yeah. Um, were you ever wounded? No. Pretty lucky. <coughs> That's okay. Um, did you make uh, some friends and stuff like that while you were in there that maybe you kept in contact with? Later? I only have one friend that I've stayed in contact with. He lives in Arkansas. Okay. He's been in here to see me, I think, about four times, and I've been down there. And if they don't get a card Christmas time, they're on the phone and want to know what's wrong with me. I haven't got a card. Good. What, what's his name? Claiborne Bratton. How do you spell his last name? B-R-A-T-T-O-N. Okay. So, well, that's great that you've kept in touch. And there was one of Pittsburgh, well, in Pittsburgh, it was uh, Coriopolis, just north of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. I was up to see him one time, and we sent cards for several years, and all of a sudden we just quit. And I'm going to try to find him again. In fact, I think he lives right close to my daughter up there now. Good. I looked in the directory, and I'm pretty sure it was him. And he lives right there close. It's too easy to lose touch with people, isn't it? Pardon me? I said it's too easy to lose touch. Yes, it is. We get lazy, I think. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, can you describe the most significant event that you witnessed during the war? Tell us something. Or would you rather not? Well, war is not a pretty picture. You know. you know, someone asked me the other day, said, do you watch any of this? War movies on there. I said, no, no, that's not. I was over there and I don't want to see them. And I don't. I don't feel that way. War is terrible. I don't know. I've been trying to figure out for 56 years now why people have to get along like that. Seems like we ought to be intelligent enough to, you know, if we didn't like one, I'd leave them alone anyway. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, and I probably shouldn't say this, and I'm on tape too, of course I'll cut this out, but I'm a woman, and I'm from a different generation mm -hmm. from you altogether. But my feeling, to me, it's kind of like pick, somebody picking a fight with their neighbor and then sending me over there to settle it. And the way my grandfather explained it, he said the the rich man starts it and the poor man's boys fight the war. And I don't know why I'm thinking like this lately, but it's like... But there was rich people's sons in there too. Yeah. But it's, it is a hard thing to understand. And, um, yeah, I don't, uh, 
Okay. What uh, What is your best memory of the war? What's something good you remember about it? Or was there anything good to remember? Well, one thing that I remember and think about quite often is after the war ended, to find that I had friends over there that, that were German. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I think we were fighting the wrong people. They're the finest people I ever met. They're kind of a class to themselves. Uh, the French, they were kind of for a good time. That's yeah. <laughs> they like, but uh, Germans were anything they did, they did it well. It didn't matter if it was digging a ditch or whatever they might do, they did they did it well. Okay. Um, did you receive any awards or anything? No, nothing more. Just the standard things that I'm wearing. Okay. Uh, once you got home and it was all over, I know this. This is an event that you'll never ever forget. None of you. But are there still things today that remind you? Uh, of your time of war, I don't know, things like uh, uh, taps playing when you're up here on the hill or uh, uh, gunshots or anything. Are, are those, do you ever hear things or smell things that, that remind you? No. Okay. I, uh, I don't know if I should say it or not, but most awful thing I ever smelled was going through a town after it had been leveled and there was bodies uh, decayed under that rubble and stuff. The human flesh to uh, decompose is not, okay. not a very good smell. Okay. That's obviously something you have never ever. You know, when I first got over, we went in, we in Germany, Aachen, and the only thing that was left there was a cathedral, and I don't know why it stood, but everything else was left. The whole town was just out there and flat. And that's what you mean by leveled, just yeah, flattened was, out. Yeah, everything was, every building but that one cathedral, I don't know why it didn't, I didn't go down with the rest, but it didn't. Okay. What was the name <coughs> of the place? Aachen. Okay, and that's in Germany. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I think that's pretty much. Is there anything else about the war you would like to mention that maybe I didn't ask? something that just a minute I don't think of anything. Okay. Um, I might say that it was quite an experience though for an 18 year old boy that had only been out of the state a couple of times. I've been to Cumberland, Maryland and back a few times. And, uh, you were 18 when you went in? Pretty big, pretty big in? trip for me. Were you 18 when you went in? Yes, I was 18 the first day of August and the third day of November I was Marching. That's uh, through my eyes. That's still a child. Pardon me. I said through my eyes. That's still a child. A mother. Yeah. A mother's yeah. eyes. Right. But you know, we didn't know anybody. They usually had older people that were in charge, and you did what you were told. Yeah. I used to about had to if you wanted to stay out of trouble. I know I interviewed Mr. Paul yesterday, and that's pretty much what he said. I think he was 17, and he said... He's, he's just a year younger than I am. He said he, yeah. Uh, is he really? My birthday's the same day. Are they really? Okay. But he, yeah, uh, that's pretty much what he said. You know, they were just young kids and doing what they were told. Yes, yes. That was it. Okay. Um, you mentioned the B&O. You worked for the BNO? Yes, I, uh, my junior year of school, I think long about February, I went to work for the railroad. 
I worked till November then when I went into service. Then I came back, I worked and finished my apprenticeship to the Boilermaker. Well, they did away with steam locomotives and they didn't need Boilermakers anymore, so I worked construction work then for probably 15 or 16 years and I spent my last 21 years trying to teach. And I don't recommend teaching to anybody. Okay, now where did you teach? To vocational center here. Here in Taylor I started, County? Yeah, I started here in Prentytown. They had a vocational program going here and they let me work on a permit. I had to go back to school when I was 40 years old and get a teaching certificate. Now, was that at the industrial school? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you've done a lot. You've uh... Well, that's certainly ex the good experiences. Mm -hmm. In fact, I've always enjoyed what I was doing most of the time. The last two years I taught, I didn't. I was unhappy and I retired a year earlier than I had planned on. Okay. Um, um, my mind just went back. The color guard that you're mm -hmm. a part of, you're dressed for today. You right. have a funeral shortly. Uh, how long have you been a member of that? Oh, about six years. I, I never belonged to, I felt that I should belong to one of the organizations, but I'd been in the Legion, I'd been in the VFW with friends, and to me it was just a place to go take a drink. Well, I never drank, and I, I didn't need that, so I didn't. Mm -hmm. But uh, since I got into it, this is a part of it that I, I can handle. Well, this is a, a great service that you guys perform. Uh, you battle all the weather, no matter what day of the week it is. You guys are out there. You've been up there on a good stormy day. No, it's I haven't. It's something else up there on a bad day. Yeah. Well, the wind blows all the time up there. Even if it's blowing up there now. Mm -hmm. In the winter, when it's stormy nights. No, you, something up there. You guys fight the snow, you fight the cold, you fight the heat. Well, we, uh, we think it's kind of a privilege to do it. That's what our fellow countrymen want us to be put away that way. We, we're happy to do it. Sure. About how many funerals have you participated in? <coughs> Over 700, I don't know, just... Uh, That's a lot. Just how many, but I know it's over 700. Okay. Um, well, is there anything else I should ask you about? Anything you'd like to mention about your life or life over here in Taylor County or... Well, I've lived in Taylor County since 1946 when I got out of service. Well, I got married when I first came out. I was engaged while I was in there and came out. I uh, got discharged at Fort Meade and uh, my wife-to-be was working in Baltimore. So when I got my barracks bag and headed for home, I just went over where she was staying and picked her up and brought her back. She never did go back to work. Okay. Well, I think that's pretty much it. If you well, I can't I think, think so. of anything well, different. To say, uh, okay. Well, I thank you for uh, you're coming welcome. over here and talking with me. And uh, how are we doing on time? Oh, I got you have plenty of time. time. Because it's okay. The cemetery's right here. Okay. But, uh, no, I tell you, this has uh, been a project that. I was kind of leery of when they gave me this assignment, and I did an interview, I didn't know any of this stuff, and, and uh, I'm still a little bit nervous about interviewing you guys, because I don't want to ask probate questions that upset you. You're or, asking anything I didn't want to talk about, I just okay. wouldn't ask. 